Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another video for our 2D hack and slash course, pay what you want course. In the description, there are two links for if you want to support this course. There's one for itch.io where you can donate, or my Pixar course, so you can buy that. Okay, so in this lecture, in this lesson, I should say, we're going to be adding in an enemy. So the first thing we need to do is import the sprites for that enemy. So I'm going to create a new group here. So I'm going to add a group and we'll name this skeleton. Or er, let's see, we already have skeleton knight. Since the knight, the skeleton's kind of the good guy. And then you'll need your grave resources. So I've got these opened up right here. I'm going to come into sprites, knight. These are the sprites we need. We should be able to select them all. Click and drag and drop them into our project right here on night, like that. There we go. And it should be noted that when I started recording this video, I was actually having issues dragging, dropping them in. And I'm not sure why it wasn't showing up here in the project, in the resources when I would drag it over. And then it would just, my Windows Explorer would freeze up. I don't know if that was Windows or Game Maker. I can't say for which one it is. But if you had that same issue, then try restarting your computer because that seems to have worked for me. Okay, so let's remove the strip part on each of these sprites because we don't need that. Uh, night mask, perfect. I think this one we're going to want to uh, do bottom middle, bottom center for that for the origin. And we'll be changing the origins on each of these as we add them. Hit stun and die animation. There we go. So we've got all our animations. Oops, one more attack. It's got a lot of attack frames, lots of wind up. Uh Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> I was a little worried there. Okay, so we've got our skeleton and our knight. We'll drag the wall down below the knight. There we go. And save. And we need to create a new object. Create one. Call it O underscore knight. And we'll assign a sprite to it. Let's assign our idle sprite. Okay, let's actually set the origin on idle and walk. And I'm gonna look at my reference here to see where I set the origin on this, on these. Let's do, let's see, it's 48 high. So let's do, let's do similar to our character sprite. We'll do 24 and 48. I think that's what we did on the character sprite is 24 and 48, isn't it? 24 and 48, yeah. So we'll do a similar thing for the knight because they're they're very similarly sized. So then we have, let's see, we have our walk. Let's do our walk as well. So 24, 48. Now that we've done that, we can actually drop our knight into the room. So we'll come into our room, zoom in just a bit here click on the instances layer because that's where all of our instances are. And we'll drag and drop this knight right into the room right there. That looks good. He's facing the wrong way, but that's okay. We'll write some code that will turn him around. Okay, now we can get rid of the room and come into our knight object. Now our knight is going to have some states just like our, just like our skeleton did. So we're going to create a variable in here called state. Set this one equal to chase. Did we capitalize this state on skeleton? No, we didn't, okay. Just wanna keep this the same to make it easier to remember. So we'll set our state equal to chase. We'll add a step event. We'll set up our switch statement, switch state. And we'll set up our case, case, chase, break. There we go. So this is the 
this is the state for when our skeleton is chasing the player, which is going to be most of the time uh, because they're not really going to like walk around or anything. They're just going to either chase the player, attack the player, or get hit. So we're only going to really have a few states here. The knights. I, I may have been calling this the skeleton the whole time, but I do mean the knight if I, if I have mistakenly said that. So we're going to want to first set uh, we're going to want to first set the sprite. Well, let's also, we want to make sure we set this up with a, we'll do that after. We'll set the sprite. So what did we call our script? Set state sprite. Set state sprite. And what info does it need? It needs a sprite. So we'll do uh, s night walk. Then we'll do point zero point two for the speed. And we'll do index. We can set it to zero. Okay. Now we need to find our player and then attempt to move towards the the player, which is the skeleton in this case. So let's create a local variable that well we can we can we can do this. We'll just we'll just do this with an if statement to see if the player exists. So we'll say if not instance exists o skeleton then we'll want to just exit so this is a new this is a new um, keyword that I haven't explained yet so let me briefly explain that this just means if we can't find the player exit completely out of this code we could actually run break here as well um, break and that would just basically exit out of our state uh, but exit exits out of the entire block of code this whole step event pretty much it would it would exit out of it so we'll actually use break for this I think because it we don't need to exit out of everything that happens in the step event just our chase state so this will just it'll just mean if the if the skeleton doesn't exist then we won't try and run any of the code that comes next because we'll get error message if we error messages if we don't have this check first. So once we've done that, we can set our image x scale equal to sign o skeleton dot x minus x. Okay. How does this work? Well, the sign function right here will return either, it will return either, well, it returns three values. It can return negative one, zero, or one. It will return, it will return negative one if the value inside of it is negative. So if this is negative 100, this will be negative one. It will return positive one if the value inside of it is positive, so it could be positive a million, it will just return positive one. But if the values are exactly the same, then it will return zero. So the zero case is kind of a bad one because our player could vanish if it, or the, the knight could vanish if our image x scale was set to zero. So we want to make sure that this is never set to zero. And there's different ways that you can do this, but I'm gonna do this in a very straightforward way, which is if image x scale is equal to zero, then we'll set it x scale equals one. We'll set it to one. This is a very rare case, but we want to handle for it just, just in case to be safe. 
and there's cleaner ways to do this, but I'm trying to keep these things uh, a little bit simpler, more straightforward. So this should force our skeleton, not our skeleton, our knight, to face the player at all times. Because if the player's x position is greater, then this will be positive and our image x scale will be positive. Aren't we facing? Oh yeah, we're facing the right way. Okay. But if or our image x scale will be positive one. If the player is on the left side of the of the knight, then this value right here will be negative and our image x scale will be negative, so we'll face to the left. So if we run the game right now, you should be able to see this in action. So he's facing, he's actually walking towards us, facing that direction. If we come over here, he faces us this way too. And we don't have to worry about him going invisible if we move right on top. Hopefully because of this code right here. Okay, so now we need to actually move towards the player. And this gets a little bit tricky, but it's not too bad. So first we're going to get the distance. We're gonna get the distance to the player. So we'll say var distance to player. And we can use a local variable here because um, we're only gonna use this in this little bit of code equals, and there's a function that we can use for this, point distance. And you need to, for this function, it needs to have two points or um, an x1, a y1, an x2, y2. So we'll do our current location, which is x and y, and then the skeleton's location, o skeleton dot x, comma, o skeleton dot y. Now we have the distance to the player, so we can decide if we want to do something uh, based on how far we are from the player. So we'll say if distance to player is greater than 42, and this is literally just, this value right here is something that we may want to set up as a variable in just a minute so we don't have a random for number 42 inside of our code, because what does this mean? This doesn't mean anything, right? We'll fix that in just a minute. So if, basically, if we're close to the player, or if we're far away from the player, farther than 42 pixels, then we want to move towards the player. So we'll say move and collide and we have an x speed and a y speed so we're going to do image x scale because that will be either negative one or positive one right image x scale times and then we can set up whatever move speed we want this to be at and I'm going to check my reference code here to see what the move speed I used was because we'll want to do something Similar, I think it was pretty slow. I just did one, so <laughs> times one, which is a little bit pointless, but for the sake of, for the sake of, give me just a minute, you'll see why I do that, but we'll do zero in the Y. Obviously, we don't want to move on the Y right now. So now we've got our movement set up, so we should be able to move towards the player, like that. And then we'll need to, uh, well, we don't need an actual case outside of this because the case outside of this is for when we switch to our attack state. So we'll be doing that. We'll be doing that little bit later. Let's see if this works, if this actually works correctly, if it looks pretty good. So one seems a little bit fast, but you can see he moves till he gets close to me and then stops and is always facing me. But one does seem fast. I don't remember. I'm going to run, I'm going to run my reference project and just kind of look how fast they move in the reference project real quick.
But yeah, that's pretty fast, honestly. So they move pretty fast. They just animate faster. So let's change, I guess we'll change this to four right here instead of 0.2. Because they, they, they come at me pretty fast. Yeah, that looks better. That looks like what it looks like in the th in the game. Or pretty close anyways. So that's probably, so why is it different for Game Maker Studio 1.4, Game Maker Studio 2? Well, in Game Maker Studio 2, they added what's called uh, sprite speed right here. And this value basically defaults at 15. Um, and if Game Maker Studio 1.4 had it, which it doesn't, but if it did, it would default at 30. So um, basically that's why this is half as fast as it is in Game Maker Studio 1.4. So we get a little bit of difference in animation speed going on there. But we've got our very first enemy and it's chasing us, trying to attack us. So we've got a pretty good start going here. Uh, that's gonna be it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we will start adding the attack state into our enemy as well. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson.